Welcome, listeners, to the Weon Podcast and to the Deep Dive. Today, we're looking at something curious you might have noticed on flight maps. You see all those planes, like nearly 100,000 every day, but uh, almost none fly right over Antarctica. Why is that? Yeah, it's a great question. A lot of folks think it's political, but nope, not really. Oh, okay. So it's not diplomacy keeping them away. Not mainly, no. It really boils down to, well, safety, first and foremost, and the environment down there. Safety how? Like specific rules. Exactly. There's something called E2PS. It's a regulation, basically. Yeah. It says twin engine planes, you know, most passenger jets have to stay within a, a certain flight time of an emergency airport. Right. An escape route, sort of. Precisely. And Antarctica. It's huge. It's remote. And it just doesn't have those airports. Not suitable ones, anyway. So E2PS makes it kind of off limits just by default. Pretty much. Yeah. Plus, you've got the FAA in the U.S. They have extra hoops to jump through for polar flights, special training, equipment. It adds up. Okay, so regulations are a big piece. What about Antarctica itself, the place? Oh, it's extreme. I mean, seriously extreme weather. Think fierce winds, sometimes way over 200 miles per hour. Whoa, 200 miles per hour. Yep, and these unique things called catabatic winds. Super dense, cold air, just pouring down slopes at high speed. Very dangerous for flying, especially landing. So it's a combination then, the rules, the lack of airports, and just the sheer hostility of the place. That's the core of it. It highlights how much planning and safety goes into just, you know, getting you from A to B. So next time you look at a flight map, remember there's more to those lines than just the shortest path. It's about safety, engineering, dealing with Earth's extremes. We hope this deep dive gave you a new aha moment. Stay tuned for more such intriguing stories to come.